everyone, it's Jego Reyes for CNN Philippines 10, where we break down major stories from here and abroad into bite-sized facts in 10 minutes. The country's top universities have again made it to the Times Higher Education Rankings, the world's prestigious academic league table. Ateneo de Manila University remained as the top Philippine university, which is in the 1,001 to 1,200 bracket, lower than last year's 351 to 400 bracket. University of the Philippines followed Ateneo at 1,201 to 1,500 bracket, while De La Salle University and University of Santo Tomas are both in the 1,501 plus bracket. Nearly 2,000 universities were listed in the World University Rankings, which came from 108 countries and regions. The Department of Education has started the pilot run of the Matatag curriculum in 35 public schools across the country, including the Tinajeros National High School in Malabon. Kumonte yung mga learning competency, pero hindi siya... Um, mababawasan ng quality. Kasi, ibig sabihin na may mga topics talaga, may mga skills na uh, pinag-isa upang sa ganun ay talagang nakafocus talaga doon sa mga uh, ma-acquire o kailangan need na makuha ng mga bata. The learning competencies to be taught was reduced to 3,000 from the previous 11,000. The pilot testing of the Matatag curriculum covers kinder and grade levels 1, 4, and 7. These grade levels will kick off the phased implementation of the new curriculum beginning next school year. DepEd says the pilot implementation is part of a research to identify the challenges facing the new curriculum and find ways to address them. The department also wants to ensure the new curriculum focuses on developing key competencies and foundational skills among students. Magiging matatagpong lalo ang ating mga bata sapagkat sila ay niyahanda na po sa kanilang mga magiging trabaho sa future. Uh, tayo po ay magiging globally competitive dahil ang mga skills po na ide-develop sa ating mga anak ay talagang 21st century skills. Ang mga bata talaga ay magkakaroon din ng focus dun sa mga learning competency. So talagang yung quality talaga ng education ay makukuha ng mga, ng mga batang ito. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA has officially launched its Motorcycle Riding Academy to help reduce motorcycle-related accidents. It is offering a two-day safety course with 100 riders for every batch and is free for beginners and experienced motorcycle riders who are 17 years old and above. The course includes basic traffic rules and even anger management on the road. Yan po ang gustong i-address na baguhin po yung mindset or kaisipan ng ating mga nagmumotorsiklo kasama po sa curriculum natin na ituturo na uh, kontrolin yung emotion sa daan, uh, magbigayan at magpong mag sa daan. For now, the program is limited to MMDA employees and ride-hailing services on a test run for possible improvements. However, the agency hopes to open the service to the general public by mid-October. Participants will need to fill out the online enrollment form and submit some requirements. They need to bring a helmet, gloves, and rain gear while motorcycles are provided. Successful participants will receive certificates of completion and badges and will get priority for employment in ride-hailing services. Tayo rin po ay nakikipag-ugnayan sa TESDA para po uh, ma accredit itong ating Motorcycle Riding Academy at magamit din po sa pagkuha ng lisensya. MMDA Acting Chairman Romando Artes says similar facilities may be put up in Batangas and Oriental Mindoro. And news from San Miguel Corporation. The conglomerate recognizes its beneficiaries in Sariaya, Quezon. This year, the local government is eyeing faster economic growth as it continuously recovers from the pandemic. Mayor Marcelo Galleta says this is also due to Sariaya's improving employment situation and economy with the help of the private sector such as SMC. Kapag may trabaho na yung mga kababayan ko, hindi na nila kaya kailangan ng ayuda sa bayan ng Sariaya. Dahil pare-pareho ni silang may trabaho. In a graduation ceremony in Barangay Castañas, over 50 residents finished their skills training on shielded metal arc welding and heavy equipment operation. There were also graduates of alternative learning system in elementary and high school, as well as college scholars. Livelihood opportunities were also offered at a job fair which featured local partner contractors and subsidiaries of SMC. Job offers include work as welders, heavy equipment operators, construction workers, carpenters, farmers, and food industry workers. 
free houses and lots were awarded to those being relocated to give way to the construction of SMC's integrated food complex in South Luzon, particularly in Sariaya. Hindi lamang po libreng bahay sa isang maayos at safe na lugar, kundi libreng lupa, may mga amenities po dito. At pagkatapos noon, sabi natin sa kanila, kayo ay kailangan magsanay para sa mga trabahong kakailanganin po ng ilalagay nating integrated food complex. Mayor Gayeta says this will help the municipality attain its goal of being a city. Based on House Bill 6288, a city may only be created if the income of a municipality is at least 100 million pesos. This year, Sariaya's income may reach about 150 million pesos. Three Filipino high school students won a silver medal and two bronze medals at the International Olympiad in Informatics held in Hungary, the country's best performance in the competition. The contest is considered as one of the world's most prestigious competitive programming events. Grade 12 Kyler Tan won the silver medal for solving computer programming problems, competing against representatives from 87 countries. He shares he started trying out programming when he was in grade 9. Expand your horizons. I think try new things. At, at first, I didn't know anything about pro competitive programming. But then I saw this. It was only when I tried programming for the first time that I realized, wow, okay, this talaga is what I want to do moving on in the future. Teacher Jeric Maribao gave free sacks of rice to parents of his students to further urge them to guide and support their children in school. He noticed that many of his grade 5 and 6 students in Misamis Occidental do not have food due to poverty. That's why Jeric saves a portion of his money each payday to buy rice. He adds that his earnings as content creator also help. At times, he also offers free breakfast. Just always put your heart on what you do. We are teaching because we wanted to change the lives of our learners. And always go beyond to um, what, uh, go beyond to the responsibilities as a teacher, um, just like providing food. And always ask guidance from God, and in that way, you shall make a difference. <laughs> About 8,000 cadets of the Reserve Officer Training Corps or ROTC took part in the country's first ever ROTC Games. The cadets competed in various sports such as track and field, basketball, boxing, kickboxing, arnis, volleyball, and e-sports. A beauty pageant was also held for female cadets who also showed off their skills and talents. Senator Francis Tolentino says participants were from public and private schools. He adds that the ROTC Games were designed to boost cadets' patriotism. The NCR leg of the Games is on October 8 to 14, to be followed by the national championships from October 22 to 27. The Visayas leg was recently concluded in Iloilo, and the Mindanao leg in Zamboanga City. Filipino Swifties are so ready for it as their idol's new concert film is confirmed to be released in the Philippines. Starting October 13, Taylor Swift, the era's tour, will have worldwide screenings. Tickets are now on sale. The movie will show what is expected to be the highest grossing tour in history. 219 dogs with their owners grace the showing of Paw Patrol, the mighty movie in Los Angeles, California, setting a new Guinness World Record for the most dogs to attend a film screening. Event organizers invited families to bring their dogs to watch. That's why it broke the previous record of 199. The movie will be in Philippine cinemas starting October 11. And now for our 10-second trivia. Which among these countries is mosquito-free? America, Japan, Iceland, or Spain? Iceland is the only country with no mosquitoes. Aside from not having ponds and lakes where mosquitoes can breed, Iceland's climate is another factor. The country has three major freezes and thaws a year. In a day, it can experience four seasons. Changes like this do not give mosquitoes enough time to mature. And that's it for CNN Philippines 10. I am Jego Reyes, giving you news you can use. News you can trust in 10 minutes. Thanks for joining me today and see you again next time.